ARG Alternative Reality Games, a concept most of you might be familiar with, but still, some might not know the full definition of an ARG. Not even I knew the entire definition with certainty when I first began making this video. An alternative reality game is, as the name kind of implies, a game where the line between the real life world and this concept of a game gets blurred, using multiple mediums, especially the real life world, to show this story, using real life locations as goals or hints. However, they usually take on the form of a more disturbing nature, even though it's mainly just puzzles. These ARGs can span over a whole plethora of ideals and concepts, some being mere YouTube videos where you can gather hints throughout the series to make a story, while others take entire continents in use, using real life locations to give hints and codes, which can be used in the final project. Even without knowing it, you might have played an ARG before, or at least heard of it. Like Cicada, Poppy, Local 58, and many more, which this chart might show you and intrigue you. So, with that being said, prepare yourself for the game of games. See what the world of ARGs have to offer. Who knows, maybe you have the power to solve them. Or maybe you'll just be trapped in a hole. Marble Hornets is an ARG from 2019, where ARGs began to have their golden age on the internet, with a bunch of ARGs popping up, but with this one being perhaps the most popular of them all, and maybe also the longest, being about 9 hours total. But I guess most ARGs are long, it's just me being flabbergasted that a whole series on YouTube being 9 hours, I mean, I thought my videos were long, Jesus. Marble Hornets first came out a few days after Slenderman first appeared on the web, and with Slenderman being one of the most famous characters of all time on the web, these two being connected had a huge effect on the ARG. In the ARG you follow James Merrick, who've gotten some recordings from Alex Crayley, a seemingly quiet student who left the filming of Marble Hornet, a student film project that Alex was working on at the time, for some rather strange reasons. Jay left these tapes to collect dust for a few years, before finally actually looking at them and seeing what they contained. And in these films, he would understand why Alex left the filming so quickly and so bizarrely. In the tapes you can see Alex not only in production, but also between takes, where he was slowly getting paranoid by something in the distance. While at first not really knowing what it is, it quickly becomes apparent that this is Slenderman, following Alex around his town. You then follow 87 episodes of Alex trying to escape Slenderman and Jay understanding what in the world is going on. I could go deeper in detail but that would be spoiling the entire game and you wouldn't want that would you now? Well you've all already most likely watched it so uh, not much there I guess. Cicada 3301 consists of three levels or bundles of puzzles, all of which have been solved except the last one. The whole ordeal is one long string of puzzles, questions and mysteries, both in real life and on the web, where problems must be solved in a rather cryptic way, which most people couldn't really do. It was a hard, hard challenge, which meant that most people that finished and solved the puzzles were geniuses or just straight up intellectuals, which were what Cicada looked after. While we don't know much about Cicada, we do know that they were apparently recruiting intellectuals for their organization, that being Cicada 3301, but what that organization did is not really known. It could be anything from a terror organization, a hack organization, the CIA, British secret services, or just jokes, giggles and a fun little event. It could very well be a recruitment ad, as the US Navy have tried similar things in the past, to recruit new sailors. Yet even though all that is possible, no direct answers have been found, and still to this day, the group is very mysterious. They have openly commented about certain things, like for example, saying they are a terror group and disconnecting themselves from actual terrorist groups who claim the image, 
But besides that, they are very quiet and don't really seem to say much. The puzzles were pretty straightforward, once solved, of course. In the process, they were extremely hard. Being encrypted letters, which gave addresses, which then gave music, which then gave notes, which then gave hints, which then gave a key, which then gave another thing, and so on and so on, until the final maze was finally solved and the puzzle was completed. Whereafter, Sakeda would contact you to try and get more information out of you and see if you were for freedom on his isnet or if you weren't. Whereafter, you were invited to a private forum where more things were to happen, but we don't know that. Unless you are one of those geniuses who solved the entire thing, which you most likely aren't, but still. It's a mystery which we don't know much about, and a damn good ARG if I do say so myself. Even if it is just recruitment for the CIA. Ben Drowned is a classic creepypasta and ARG made by Alexander Hall under the pseudonym of Jet Doosable, which changed internet for ever, I must say. It almost made a standard of how creepypastas and ARGs would work on the internet from then on. While most people know Ben Drowned as simply the statue, the story is much longer than just that. Having three whole seasons, if you can say that, which all takes place in the beginning which most people know. The story begins as most people know it, as a sophomore buying a copy of Majora's Mask from some creepy guy in a garage sale. He then proceeds to play the game where the whole story unfolds. Of course, with the child being killed by a cult called the Moon Children, which prays to the moon. Which I guess is reminiscent to the fact that in the game, the moon is clearly evil. I mean, just look at it. Just like how Ben Drowned could be to the fact that Drowning Link is the easiest way to get killed in Majora's Mask without there being any enemies. Which of course, matches the story. In the story, the Drusible slowly finds out more and more about this cult, and eventually wants to return the game because, well obviously. But at this point, the old man who sold him the game was already long gone, knowing full well what potential the game had. And of course, that the cult was also in the making. The local 55 TV channel is a TV channel in Western Virginia, which features news like any other TV channel out there. Except this one is prone to be hijacked and hacked quite a lot. Each episode is a new scenario where the TV channel is getting messed up by some kind of outside force, trying to convey a message. While each episode is different in length and in theme, there is one or two overlaying themes through the entire thing. Besides of course being a TV channel, that being the moon and the night sky, which is seen as dangerous somehow. How, it is not known, just don't look outside, don't look at the moon. Do look at the moon. Do look at the moon. It's a project by Chris Straub and was made with some rather primitive tools by some standards, but still made a great project. In fact, Local 58 TV didn't start as its own project, but rather a different project where this was a side story and the first episode was the only thing that was ever gonna come of it. Yet it slowly evolved and was highly praised and slowly the ball began to roll and Local 58 became its very own thing. And here we are today. A fine project indeed. Hi, I'm Mary Mary is a Twitter and YouTube ARG featuring Mary, a girl who wakes up in a house with no clear memory of what's happening. Except for two things. That her name is Mary and that this house is a copy of a parent's house. The house is simply locked and there is no escape from this house. However, there is unlimited food, a computer, access to the internet, and a bunch of weird phenomenons which doesn't really make any sense. Like, for example, a door leading to the ocean, and sometimes a closet. It's a bit over the place. During the day, Mary tries to figure out what's actually happening and why she's in this situation. But at night, she isn't too focused about that because apparently she isn't too alone in this house. It's a very horror oriented ARG, but it's also very surreal and could lead up to a lot of suggestion, which means you can interpret the ARG in a bunch of different ways. Maybe the house is her mind, maybe these beings is her thoughts, or maybe the real beings that are actually trying to kill her, or maybe they're not. It's a very open story as you can hear. 
while Mary is trying to figure out what the hell is going on, so can you through the many episodes and tweets which builds upon this weird strange world. While it could be a story about a person changing personality and being, it is definitely a story about Mary trying to escape this evil being in her house at night. No Players Online is an ARG featuring an actual game called No Players Online, which is a game where no one is online. It's supposed to be a multiplayer capture the flag game, but since no one is online, it's just you, so um, have fun. However, while the game in itself is just a quick game or taking in 20 minutes, there is a bunch of secrets in this game which slowly reveal the actual ARG, a kind of second phase to the game if you can say that. The game is interrupted by the creator who pleads you to not finish the game as he uses this game to connect to his dead wife which is in a kind of limbo. However, using the different secrets of the game reveals a whole new part of this ARG where you can use an online guide to get a second and even third ending. It could be anything from an eye in the sky to pressing a certain code to get certain text or just playing the game through again to get no dialogue from the creator. Being a kind of hard game, there's been a huge fan base around the game trying to solve it, with the whole discord being made to solve the ARG in its many puzzles. And now, through the online guide and a discord server, you can play the game from just a simple game about you being alone in a multiplayer map to discovering the huge secret that the game has to show you. The ARG has you to follow the game called I, which gave a new part to the game, and after that, more and more was added on, like a built-in forest and decrypted messages. In all honesty, which few people know, was that the ARG was made along the way, meaning that at first it was just a game, but more and more things were added to make the ARG more exciting, with one of the creators even joining the Discord server to add things on as people began to solve the previous puzzle. However, the ARG was solved rather quickly, and now you can experience the whole ARG through videos and through guides. Unico Sepervente 2027 is a Spanish TikTok ARG featuring a man who's apparently trapped in the future. The man is filming his mini TikToks in Valencia in Spain and has for some reason or somehow traveled to the future a whole four years ahead with no people around or anything at all. The entire third largest city of Spain is just completely abandoned and without any people around. It's a rather strange phenomenon and especially a strange ARG because we don't know how he does that. He does react to comments and eventually does things that the comments tell him to do, like drive a Lamborghini and so on and so on, exploring different areas as people want him to. Yet there could be a very real explanation to why he can do this, that being COVID. You know, back then when no one was outside. So with the entire city being abandoned, he could film these, wait a bit and upload them now as a kind of, hey look, I'm in the future kind of thing. And this can also be seen in the fact that some of the accounts are fake, could prove that it is indeed filmed in 2020, when COVID first began. Yet I'm all wondering about how this makes any sense. There is no explanation of how he travels to the future, and no explanation of why the future is just abandoned. Surely people should be in the future, but it's just him. They just travel to an empty future? What the fuck is going on? The ARG in itself is quite nice, and is a rather creative ARG. Yet thinking too much about it does make your head hurt, so just don't. Why think we can post him instead? Petscop is a well-known ARG on YouTube, in making a let's play, but of course, being much more than just that. It has gathered a huge fan base with over 300,000 subscribers and coverage from big YouTubers like Parasynical and Game Theorist. The series is played through a let's play where a guy called Paul plays a game called Petscop, made by a fictional company. While at first just being Paul playing some kind of game we don't know of, it sort of becomes weirder and weirder as he uses a code on the back of the coverage of the game to encounter a whole new part of the game in the playmaker's plane, where the actual ARG begins. It is here a story unfolds about a fractured family, rebirthing of a daughter, and a bunch of weird events. I mean, Paul even fucking dies apparently. Or at least it appears, but you know, it sounds cool saying he died. You can explore the game through the different episodes, 
where each episode shows a new layer of the ARG, slowly building up the entire story through a weird, cryptid and surreal lens hidden as a mere let's play on YouTube by some guy called Paul. Catastrophe Crow 64 is an apparently cancelled N64 game that was to be made in 1999 but was cancelled after two years of delays and a constant lag of actual results, leading to the game to be scrapped and completely abandoned until found by someone, I guess, we don't know who. The game's design is pretty straightforward. With a 64-bit feel, crows as pretty much all characters and a small world to explore. The more you explore this 64-bit world, you find more and more out about the game, where after, the game begins to glitch out. You begin to teleport around different areas, get some cryptid yet pretty obvious text, and begin to see the game as what it really is. A cryptid message of some kind with a very weird and disturbing background. The game's story is most likely trying to explain the story of losing your own daughter, as one of the creators called Manfred apparently lost his daughter called Taya. This can also be seen in the fact that Taya has some drawings of a catastrophic crow of her own, which inspired the game. This can also be seen in the fact that in the so-called crow language in the game, Taya becomes crow. So it's all connected, you know. In the game, you therefore explore the grief and sadness of losing one's own daughter, along with apparently the whole process, which you, again, can see through different things, like the scarecrows, the crows, and the ending. Poppy is a singer, songwriter, and influencer on YouTube, with a good fair share of popularity, and also a connoisseur of the using of that in front of one's name, a clearly superior way of showing one's name on the web. Yet, as some of the videos on her channel show, something is a bit off. There must be more than meets the eye, as a singer songwriter wouldn't make such weird videos. Of course, an influencer will always make videos, but this isn't really a normal video at all. These videos is a long wave of strange behavior by Poppy on the web, all from live streams to uploaded videos on themselves, and eventually also a link to computerboy.com, which is apparently a whole new chapter of this ARG. When solving these cryptic messages, things like help Poppy comes up, which shows that perhaps Poppy is in danger. Along with that, numbers like 336 has some kind of influence on the ARG and is used throughout the entire series. While of course being an alternate reality game, people began to think this one was actually real. Mainly because it is of course rather mainstream, so most people who found this didn't really know what an ARG actually was, so they just jumped the gun and thought, oh shit, she's actually in danger. Which she wasn't, it's, you know, fake. But of course, being mainstream and an ARG, made Poppy quite popular, and also therefore quite well known, so let's just go on, shall we? Ted the Caver can be credited as the first ever creepypasta on the entire web, being from 2001. Now, that's a long time ago, old man, it's very old. Since the name is Ted the Caver, it of course features Ted, a man who likes to explore caves in his local area. While at first being about wandering about this cave he found with some friends, it slowly evolves to being weirder and weirder. First just going down a cave and finding a hole, to hearing screaming and strange sounds from inside the cave, which almost drives them mad, having nightmares and hallucinations about this cave. After weeks of not going down there anymore, they decide to get armed with a gun and a knife, to go down there and finally find out what is making those strange sounds in the cave. And he promises on the board he is commenting these on to return right after he is, he is done exploring the cave to tell about what it actually was that made those sounds. Yet, to this very day, that was the last message he sent. And we haven't heard from Ted the Caver since. Most likely it is appearing in the cave. And that was what the internet thought it was for a good while. After a few years, it got debunked as they found the actual cave called the Interstate Cave in Utah, and it was also debunked by using different methods and facts, which didn't really line up. While just being a big story about a man going down a cave, it is a bit of a landmark and a good story too. 
which is why it's been made into a movie, because it just kinda fits. 11BX1371 is a cryptic video with a cryptic message. Even the title is apparently some kind of code. The video features nothing more than this plague doctor flashing some lights with some beaming in the background while someone is recording him. We don't know much about the video in itself, despite the fact that it's apparently Polish and that the creator has made it as a kind of art project in its own way, but let's just ignore that for a moment because a lot of people didn't know that when it first came out, thinking that someone was trying to relay a very important message to the web, but a few people thought this was a good message and that this plague doctor was a good guy. In fact, they thought this was a serial killer trying to taunt the world about his victims. But it wasn't that, of course, it was just some guy who wanted to be a bit special. However, decoding it was still a thing you could do, and it went kinda deep. Anything from the noise in the background making an image, which then gave hints, skin numbers, it was a very cryptic affair, which I don't think has been solved yet. The video has a bunch of cryptic code, despite only being 2 minutes long. While these messages didn't lead to much, they did lead to some threatening text, which only added fire to the fuel that was a fact that this could have been some kind of eco-terrorist, serial killer or anything else that was bad. There really was a panic that this could be some kind of real life supervillain deploying his plot to world domination or something weird like that, but in reality, again, it was just an art project by some guy. Alan Tutorial is an ARG I think most people know of, as it kind of fits as a perfect starting ARG if you want to get into the whole thing. It features nothing more than a YouTube channel with a bunch of tutorials where Alan tries to teach you things and life hacks about life and how to live life in a more effective manner. But of course, these aren't the most useful tutorials. This has led some people to think that the character of Alan is artistic or has some kind of a mental issue. He certainly isn't normal in any way possible, as he acts very out of the ordinary, pretty much in the entirety of this ARG. The big turning point from making several tutorials comes as he escapes the house from his apparent brother, if he even is a real character that is, and embarks on an adventure through the town experiencing a bunch of weird scenarios, even being captured and escapes and lives in the wild, all while still making these glorious tutorials. The ARG has a bunch of underlying themes and reoccurring appearances, like a blue chair, money and of course the many tutorials. All of these things does have some underlying themes, which contribute some kind of meaning to the whole series as there is some kind of deep but depressing meaning behind this. Yet most people who stumble upon this ARG didn't know that at first. They just saw a tutorial on picking up a blue chair and they became mesmerized with the stupid side of this ARG. Which is fair, it's hilarious in its own right, but of course, there's more than meets the eye. Cat Ghost is an ARG about cats and ghosts. Or oh, well, one cat, a ghost and... Um, a porcupine. Great team. The air routine itself can be chopped up to two different parts per video, where it usually starts out as a normal cartoon with some cartoony feels and sort of turns into hell. Either 8 bits or just cartoonish hell. It depends on the video. There is also chapters, which tell the story from different points of view, as an intro part, a void part, and slow developing more and more into the main plot. However, the story of these three friends, if you can call their relationship that, goes further than just YouTube. They also have a website where you could find some links to games and, and other things, telling a deeper side of the story. In fact, the whole ARG portrays itself as some kind of video, or at least animation, but has a lot of other feels to it, especially video games, which is a current topic of this ARG. Along with, along with some kind of voidish feeling where the three characters explore the void in its many ways. Ash Vlogs is an ARG which starts as a very simple vlog channel by a person called Ash. It starts off very mundane as Ash just makes vlogs because, huh, 
funny. Which then quickly becomes interesting as some guy begins to follow her and stalk her. The final video on the channel reveals her apparently being kidnapped and presumably also killed. We don't know that for sure. In fact, we don't know how this ARG actually ends because, well, it's in a way still ongoing, even though all this time afterwards. It is still unknown what happens in the end to this very day. Yet what is interesting about this ARG is that it starts on the Azure Logs channel, but continues on the IKWSI channel, which stands for I know where she is. Which is where the whole thing uh, continues. It continues on YouTube, Discord and Snapchat, where you slowly gather hints on what have happened to Ash. Where she is, what they mean behind all this is, who IKWSI is, and their likes. There's also a bunch of different characters, including Raka Raka, which I think was just a weird accident, but I don't know, it's, it's almost too good to be true. The presumed kidnapper has some kind of symbol which he uses a lot, both on the web and in real life. The clue finding to find the actual ending of this ARG is very vast, not only being on the web on the previously set websites, but apparently also in real life, where the symbol of I know where she is is constantly being used as hints and as answers. Still to this day, you can go around and try and find out what happened to Ash, if she actually is still alive, why she was kidnapped, who kidnapped her, and what her final fate might have been. I mean, this apparently happened in 2018, so she's most likely dead. I mean, be, be cool here, like, be real, you know, she's fucking dead, she's in a thousand pieces in Adelaide, Australia. <laughs> Just my thoughts, I'm so alone in this room, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Well, I guess the creator of this ARG on TikTok, Alexander, is all alone. And I mean, totally alone. In this ARG, Alexander wakes up and realizes that his mother isn't home and never returns. And 911 doesn't call back, his neighbors are gone, there's no cars on the road, everyone is just gone. Haven't we seen this ARG before? Yet in this ARG, Alexander might not be totally alone. While exploring the world around him to try and find any sign of life, he is often accompanied by some strange voices. While it could just be him going mad and being alone, it could also mean that he's not totally alone in this world. Throughout the ARG, he tries to contact human life through radar, phone, anything he can get his hands on. Yet somehow, he can upload his videos to TikTok and people watch it. Eventually he goes from a scavenger hunt to try and figure out what is going on, to pure survival, as he must now survive on his own, as there is no one to help him in this abandoned world. Just being alone in the world is scary enough, although it does seem that he isn't too alone in this ARG from time to time. And of course in this game, you can follow right along with him and try and explore too, why everyone is gone and where everybody might be. While this ARG doesn't have a direct end, the last video is just simply him walking around on the beach in the dark with a flashlight. Ever since, he has either given up on TikTok or somehow found something in the dark. I Am Sophie is a bit like Ash Vlogs, but instead of a little Australian girl, it is a rich brat who wants to be the new queen of YouTube because she has money. God, I hate that. And uh, so did everyone else, so good for us. The, the ARG starts off a bit normal. It's some rich person trying to be the new hip YouTuber on the web by making vlogs and videos online and challenges, which of course just oozes out this very annoying character that she is. I don't like her at all, I don't. However, only a few videos in, it changes rather quickly as Sophie apparently gets kidnapped by this person called Algorithm slowly takes over and begins to destroy the lives of the many people in this ARG, like Lara, a fan of Sophie and a person who also wants to be a YouTuber, along with other people we see along the way in this ARG. It quickly evolves with some people trying to be YouTubers to a kidnapping and an apparent murder case. This algorithm person then quickly begins to not only try to make this channel work with re-uploading the same videos, but clearly with something wrong, 
and along with destroying the lives of all those who comes along. Kidnapping Sophie, driving Lara mad, making someone kill themselves, and so on and so on. In the ARG, this algorithm person slowly begins to take over the channel and begins to gain more and more control, clearly leading up to some kind of climax in the ARG, where he will take over the website or something like that. But we don't know how this will end because the ARG got cancelled. Right in the middle. Oops, spent a bit too much money there, didn't you? So yeah, while that does have a promising start, it uh, quickly dimmed as they uh, spent too much money and uh, now they can't finish it, so it's just there. Whoops. <laughs> I find it kind of funny actually, I don't know why. But of course, being an ARG, we don't know if this is a part of the ARG or if they actually just got cancelled. So, um, most people think that it's just cancelled straight up because the creators have moved on to something else, but you know, it could always be that weird twist they're trying to make. Welcome back to Adult Swim. Not sponsored, never will be, but Whistle back. This house has people in it is an ARG where you kind of just spy on an extraordinarily ordinary family in America having a birthday party for their son. Apparently there are CCT cameras all around the house where you just see how this normal family has their normal behavior on a very normal day until, of course, things turn around. Quickly things become extraordinarily weird as there are beings running around the house their daughter refuses to get up from the floor, an electrician fights for his life, and the daughter is now facing through the floor down to the basement beneath. As this around 10 minute long video becomes rather insane, it ends with an ad for surveillance solutions, which are apparently the real enemy of this ARG, as they're the ones behind the cameras and those who spy on the family. It is said the ARG continues, as the video is simply just the front face, and the real ARG you can find on the website. However, I can't access it for some reason. It only shows me the Adult Swim website. No, I don't want to watch the Eric Andre show, shut up. At least not right now, just give me the website, man. The ARG continues in the video with a bunch of small hints and off-site easter eggs that slowly build on the plots. There are also more videos longer down the list, but again, I can't access it, so I'm just take my word for it, please you slowly experience the ARG and you see the story of this ordinary family turning upside down with the most craziest thing happening to them and the most bizarre being just kind of looming around. In the Twitter ARG of Gregory88 Wait, 88? Ah, oh, it's one of those accounts. A man inherits an old house in the Delaware forest from his grandfather. So, of course, he goes that right away and begins to live in the new house. Because it's a whole new house just for him, of course he's going to do it. However, the surroundings in this forest in Delaware quickly becomes creepy, unsettling and very unfriendly. All from a woman wandering around the estate with no eyes, to the unfriendly behavior of the locals and the very weird unwritten rules like no X and the eyes just laying on the road as he's taking his daily walks. Therefore, because he's now almost isolated from the outside, he uses Twitter as a kind of coping mechanism, as Twitter is the only place he can find comfort and actually really feel like he's talking to people. And that is where the ARG slowly begins to develop, as he tweets more and more about this weird scenario he finds himself in, both telling about how terrible this area is, but also selling the house as much as possible. Inheriting a house where her grandfather quickly becomes sour when he realizes it's in a shitty area. In an almost comedic way, he tries to both sell the house and tell everybody about how extremely terrible it is to live there. Yet, in a twist you only can find in an ARG, everything flips on its head, as it goes from preliminary horror to more of craftian horror, with widths of real crops and eggs being found in the forest with unimaginable disgusting and disturbing imagery. So how will he cope and survive this endeavor? Will he survive or will he simply give up on the estate, leaving it behind in the mess he found it in? Tangri 137 is a book of puzzles and mangled mathematical equations, even being compared with Cicada. While it certainly has the puzzles and the mystery of Cicada, it perhaps doesn't have the whole organization behind it, 
which Cicada then also might or might not have. But Tengri in itself seems to be just be a puzzle you can solve if you have the free time, the balls and the math genius, because this is extremely hard. It has been dubbed alien math problems, or even crazy alien math problems, because it is extremely bizarre, outworldish and definitely made by some kind of math whiz. The layout can be cut up into three pieces. Either it's Old Norse Turkic manuscripts, rock art, or it's math problems. In all kinds of shapes and forms, which I am far too stupid to understand. I didn't take math, I took history. The strange combination of mathematical equations and Old Norse manuscripts gives it a very odd feeling. If it was just supposed to be some kind of math puzzle, then why also add this weird decrypted text and this out the ordinary paintings from the PC era? It's a very weird combination, and some people have tried to solve it, yet I don't think most people have solved it all the way through. Most people just kinda give up midway because it's extremely hard. Now, who made this and why was it made? That's a bit of a mystery too. It's basically one giant puzzle in itself. Everything about it is something you must think about and be creative about. The Tangry books are free to download, I even have them, and you can try to solve them if you want to. We have already solved the manuscripts and what they mean, and most of the math, but of course, you can always start from scratch yourself and see if you're an alien math genius, like the creator of Tangry137. Daisy Brown is a vlog channel on YouTube which features Daisy Brown, a 17 year old girl who films her life through vlogs, and especially likes to film her pet slash sibling monster called Alan. Now what Alan actually is, is a bit of a mystery, he is just grotesque in his being, living purely of sugar and Daisy's care. Daisy as a person is very caring towards people, yet is also sheltered in her house and doesn't seem to have that many friends or relationships. She also makes many typos on her YouTube channel and Twitter, where the whole ARG is. As the ARG progresses through different videos, you slowly see the deterioration between Alan and Daisy's relationship. As Alan grows, he becomes less and less dependent on Daisy, but also more and more aggressive and grotesque and generally just anything but a good person. In general, just a total nuisance to Daisy's life. But of course, as a kind person she is, she keeps on helping him and protecting him, feeding him and letting him grow. But despite being protected by Daisy, his behavior keeps deteriorating, being more and more aggressive to a point where he abuses her and even kills her cat Strawberry. During the ARG, you not only follow behind the scenes on Twitter and the vlogs on YouTube, but also in the YouTube subtitles. This gets to a point where Daisy and Alan confront each other in a final episode called Final Video, which is the final video, where Daisy takes another character called Lithop, basically the good version of Alan, to try and escape, and confronts Alan in a very touching and moving scene. The whole ARG is actually pretty good, and works pretty well like a movie. While there might be less ARG elements than in other ARGs, it is certainly one of the better stories out there, and especially on this list. My Dad's Tapes is an ARG all about my dad's tapes. Yeah, that's right, my dad. I am the star of this ARG. This ARG follows two channels, one being owned by a boy called Chris, whose dad recently passed away. Since his dad passed away, Chris got to inherit some of his belongings. This also includes a box of VHS tapes, which intrigues him to a certain degree. Yet these videos isn't about his little leak days. No, it's a video of a man that Chris doesn't really recognize. A total stranger which partakes in some rather brutal behavior. Torturing and killing women. He uploads these reactions to YouTube, which catches the attention of the other channel in this ARG. A channel called Do Not Continue. A person who apparently knows the man in the video and is just as evil and brutal, if not more, than the man shown in these clips. This is where the actual ARG begins, since Do Not Continue makes a bunch of puzzles and riddles in his videos, talking about the tapes, 
but perhaps his username is a hint as what situation you're getting yourself into. Chris certainly didn't pick up that hint, as opening his dad's tapes were almost like opening Pandora's box, opening up for unfortunate and dangerous events for him as his life is no longer as safe as it was before this journey began. In this ARG, you must figure out who this man in these tapes are. You know, the same tapes this angry, woman-hating, deceased dad owned and tried to hide for several years from his kids. Who could this man be? God, send me a hint! This is my Milwaukee is a video all about an internal battle between the citizens of Milwaukee and a fictional company known as Blackstar. The ARG starts off as a commercial, encouraging people to move to the city because this is my Milwaukee, why not make it yours? This worked rather well, as a new company had made a mark on the city, creating jobs, better roads, hospitals and was all around a great asset to the city, making Milwaukee a city you would want to be a part of. Yet, this constant stream of good endeavors by Blackstar blinded the city as Blackstar was about to announce a whole new project which would shake the city to its core. Project Go DSEED, aka Godseed. While Blackstar had made new jobs and roads, they were also about to make a new god. Making this new god had a devastating effect on the city, withering nature and destroying lives. The residents had to destroy the entire city of Milwaukee to make an end to Blackstar's new god, which they buried under the city in hopes that it would never return again. If you want to play this game, it was a race against time, as it had a counter going down, but also a race against your own will, as this ARG included much more than just clicking on the whip. Having both a cafe in San Francisco and dead drops in the New York Public Library make you walk outside to play this game. Ugh. Lasagna Cat is, I guess, an ARG in some way. It brands itself more as a web series than anything else, but the deep humor, cryptic messages and weird events could probably lead some people to think it's an ARG. On the surface, it's nothing more than a web series, making fun of the many Garfield comic strips. It's with setups and dry humor, just like me, huh? But despite that, it is also a tribute to Jim Davis and the many comics he has made. While most of the videos are simply that, poking fun at the Garfield comics, some of them turn out to be quite strange. Like six survey results, an almost five hour long video all about Garfield, Odie or John opening a door to some person with a number. Or August 18th, 1987, where the video turns into a Final Fantasy spin-off, seemingly with no real explanation to why. While it certainly does have some ARG feels to it, it really isn't, in my opinion, an, an ARG. It really, isn't an, it really isn't an ARG, in my opinion. I would say it's more of a web series with deep humor and a creative mind. Sorry kids, but as you can most likely foresee, we aren't going to be seeing too many Teletubbies or updates on this entry. The Teletubbies update Twitter account doesn't really give them any updates on the Teletubbies show. As the man behind the account, Dave, apparently has bigger fish to fry, that being his bitch of an ex-wife, Sharon, or that is at least his view of the story. The whole ARG is almost an argument between these two, with Sharon wanting Dave to return home as she and the kids miss him, while Dave, on the other hand, has gotten mental on, on his account as can be seen by his many tweets on the account. His tweets are cryptid, Russian, sometimes funny, but also clearly disturbing telling about what messed up life he has to live, and how he hates almost everyone he knows. This arguing eventually ends up with spilling over as a climax kicks in, as Dave, who seems to have gone mentally insane, kills Sharon, then the rest of the family, and then takes over her Twitter account, leading the police to hunt him down, and give a warning through Sharon's Twitter. If you want to see the more brutal details, then you can always find it on Twitter, even though Twitter aren't too keen on having this thing up apparently. I mean, it is obvious, but it is an ARG, so come on Elon, grow some balls. When talking about forgotten languages, what do you think about? Latin? Proto-Germanic? What about a website that apparently uses a dead language to communicate as a cater-like puzzle? Oh, you didn't think of that? Oh, okay. 
Well, that is what it is. A website with some rather cryptic text, which seems to be a puzzle, as that is what most people have described it as. Forgotten language seems to show itself as some kind of cult, which uses this language and the website as either their manifesto or their cult front. Anyways, as a Tumblr user has concluded, they believe in a conspiracy theory surrounding time travel, which is most likely where they found their dead language from, and now they're using it as their main theme. Anyways, this ART is one you definitely could dive into, as it does have a kind of Cicada and Tingrat 135 vibe, but instead of being a genius at coding, puzzles or math, it seems you need to be a genius in language history. So if you believe you have that, then you can go on cracking and try and solve a whole new language. SVV or Sotalitas Volturis Voltanis is a more esoteric ARG that follows old beliefs and traditions along with old culture and religions to recruit people. Yes, this is another one of those ARG that recruits people to their secret society through different tasks and challenges. SVV is the outer order of the Department of Convolution, an organization with a psychological theme over it, apparently. We don't know what they want or what they're really up to. These tasks are usually puzzles of some kind, but they include more than just online activity, as you can also be sent to the real world to find clues. In fact, seven places around the world have had clues from this organization. It does have that cicada feel, where we don't know what organization it is, or where it's from, or what they want, but they do want one thing, some clever and active minds to join their ranks. This being more obscure and serious, yet having an actual ranking system and 72 member seats makes me jump between thinking it's obviously fake and that it could have something to it. I don't know, it could be anything really. But if you want to have a seat at the Sotalitas Volturis Voltanis fan club, then why not you make yourself worthy of joining through climbing through their ranks and solving their puzzles? Gunslinger Pro 2009 is a YouTube channel on YouTube with almost 60,000 subs, <laughs> with 8 videos, all being centered around Gmod and CF2. It is essentially an ARG following your average TF2 Gmod animator. A quite surreal idea if I do say so myself. Which I do. The channel is a rather normal channel, uploading TF2 animated shorts and Gmod tutorials. It's a man simply trying to have fun on the web. Yet, this being an ARG, things aren't really as they seem, as the ragdolls he uses to make these videos and skits are apparently alive. It centers around the many TF2 mercs he uses in his videos, which seems to feel the pain the animator is putting his NPCs through, regularly playing around with them since ragdolls are just amazing, but also for his video's sake. Yet, they aren't too keen on being controlled through their every move, so most mercs either try and say no or run away in hopes that they can escape Gunslinger Pro 2009. Yet this clueless animator has no care for their well-being since, of course, in his eyes, they are simply NPCs, but in their eyes, they are being tortured. The Found on the Tape ARG centers around a small YouTube channel of the same name, with only three short videos where none are longer than a few seconds. I'm taking a gander and guessing that this channel is supposed to be a dumb of a bunch of clips the man behind the channel have found somewhere. Not knowing what to do with them, he has uploaded them to YouTube in hopes that someone could decode them. The videos themselves seem to be nothing more than gibberish with no real meaning behind them, yet that is only the front facade. Beneath, you can find several codes, which can be decrypted through some rather tough means, which leads to nothing more than Half-Life 2 maps of all things. It is in these maps you can find the actual ARG. It isn't much more from there on, but it's still a rather weird leap. From found footage with surreal meaning to Gordon Freeman. I guess it is a creative way of showing your ARG as it goes from an ARG to an actual game, but again, it's a rather unusual concept for an ARG. I'm sure you can agree. Man, what's with all these Valve ARGs all of a sudden? I thought I was taking a break from these video game icebergs. It even features Gunslinger again. Is, is this a repeat? Well, anyways, this ARG, a bit like Gunslinger, is also rather short, consists of 9 Gmod videos, but instead of TF2 mercs, 
it's all about Half-Life characters. Watching the videos one by one doesn't really give that many clues as to what is going on. You definitely feel that something is wrong and off, but you can't really put your finger on it. The glitches, a weird being that is stalking you in the background, the fear surrounding this one room in the back of a map, and more as well. However, as Cornered Flakes puts it on the last video called Done, it seems to be a telling about a being gaining sentience inside Gmod, trying to keep a distance of the player while also trying to escape the game, perhaps to the rest of the internet. However, he does mention that this is only a theory, and it could be anything really. Yet, just like Cornered Flakes, you too could try and piece together this puzzle. Watching the whole ARG it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes, so go ham and try and make a theory if you want. Awake Glitch Swan seems to be a bit of a shorter ARG than most. Being a small YouTube channel with only 3 short videos, all clearly having some kind of secret message you can decode. Yet, what piqued my interest is that a board on peak.com claims that Awake Glitch Swan is actually collaborating with none other than Cicada. Yet, he doesn't seem to have any real evidence of this being real, only using this as a way to find a possible connection which might solve both puzzles. Yet, he seems to be out of luck. This leads us pretty much just to the channel, which has been watched less than some of my videos, which is an indicator of how absurd this channel is. It is said to be owned by a decrypt recruiter who is retired, and possibly dead, leading this ARG to be almost finished before it could even begin. And this entry might just be a bit too high for what it actually is. Equa is an ARG all about the defunct broadcasting network of Equa. It's an ARG that is apparently set in the Marvel Hornet universe and is even made by the same creator. Yet, they don't really link up at any point, so just, just a little side fact. This ARG stars a man known as Hawkins, who used to work for the network and used a pill which Aqua advertised, known as Prixen. Yet, as it was barred and consumed by clear laced communication, the network was destroyed and was no more. As time went on, he began to pick up signals from Aqua once again, despite it being shut down. He would access the network from an abandoned house which Hawkins apparently inherited from an unknown figure, and tries to use this to see what is happening on this abandoned broadcast station. And as you can expect, this is far from normal. It has been hijacked by some weirdo who now knows that Hawkins is listening in, making disturbing broadcasts and making Hawkins know that he is watching, and even breaks into the abandoned house once or twice. Eventually, while at the abandoned house, Hawkins gets confronted by an unknown man, kidnapped, and eventually wakes up with TV static on his arm and a radio letting him know that you are the last, and that he should find the brightest light, a message that gets repeated throughout the entire ARG, leading people to question who is the man behind Aqua? Who attacked Hawkins? And what the hell is the goal with Aqua and its bright light? Robert Helpman is an ARG about a man who is presumably Robert Helpman. It also features a dead body of a woman known as Daisy which can be seen as a real star of this show, as almost all videos centers around her. All 10 videos show Daisy in some kind of light, acting as if she was alive and doing things like falling down a flight of stairs, feeding the birds, and playing hide and seek. Of course, she can't do any of those things as she is dead. And if this acting like a dead body wasn't real, then it's clear to say that Helpman is most likely criminally insane. Just like how the first video starts with Daisy arriving, it also ends with Daisy leaving, promising the end of the ARG. Watching all the videos from start to end, one can try to understand what this means, if it isn't just a story about a man playing with a corpse. As Insider Mind proposes, then this ARG is trying to represent Christmas of all things, as you can be seen with the old recording of a Christmas song at the two ends. Inside of mine proposes that Helpman thinks that Christmas is dead, and it's the same every year. It starts, it ends, nothing new happens, and he sees this as something terrible. 
And well, I certainly don't agree. I mean, Christmas is always the same in my home, and I would never want it any other way. Man, if being a psychopath and a serial killer wasn't enough, now I hate this man even more. You can't destroy this for me, alright? Walking Titan isn't an ordinary ARG where you can go to some weird place on a website to solve some puzzles. No, Walking Titan is an official ARG for No Man's Sky, which you could play in the game. Two games in one, can't believe it. It seems to have been tied with the higher ups of the game as the ARG progressed as more content was added to the game. Explaining how the entire ARG went along is a bit much, as there are a total of six and a half phases to it with an abundance of sequences in between. It also included Twitch, Reddit, cassette tapes, phone numbers, real life commercials, Loop 16, NPCs, higher ups, actors, live events and real places. <gasps> and much more. As you can hear, this ARG might be more ambitious than the game itself, or at least less broken, <laughs> which is also was made by actual ARG veterans down at Alice and Smith. While Walking Titan did seem to have its own little plot and thing going on, it was actually connected to the game, as both fandoms quickly realized. What they also have in common is their long length and confusing outlook. I interrupt your regular programming with a bit of a different entry. The last many entries have been either disturbing or mysterious, yet this one is... informational. You see, if you ever want a sea of ARGs, all with low quality, or don't want to use this list, then Roblox is the place for you. There is a bunch of little games you can play on Roblox, and ARGs are indeed one of them. But uh, maybe worry about the quality of these games. While I'm sure there are some good ARGs on there, beware of those who play Roblox and imagine the linear shit you'll find in there. And no, I didn't research this entry at all. I'm not diving into the so intriguing rabbit hole of Roblox. This entry took 3 minutes to make, Zero seconds of effort, and I'm ending it right now. 70 Broad is an ARG on YouTube and Twitter that is now finished. You can't access the ARG since all the videos are privated, so it's over. The ARG featured a man named George, who starts off making a simple ARG about a man who most clearly have done something very illegal, most likely murder, and is now hiding, posting videos of then and now Reminiscence of how it was before he got involved in all of this, and how it is now that he is, well, in hiding for murder. And how he wants to, well, end his life, actually. All while he was doing this, it seemed that the main character was actually self-aware, knowing that this is nothing more than an isn't it ARG, and argues with the creator, presumably inside his head. Yet, this series took a deep turn as the actual police got involved. Ending the ARG right then and there, since the police wasn't too convinced that this ARG was all acting, and thought it might be an actual murder case. George was arrested and investigated by the police. His friends and family wanted him to stop making these videos, and his university even kicked him out due to the investigation. However, that wasn't gonna stop George, who only made more projects during this period. This eventually led him down a spiral of semi-insanity, with some crazy events happening in between, all while the viewers were confused as to what they were watching. Is this actually a criminal? Is he actually insane? What the hell is happening with Sam and Oh, uh, actually there was nothing. It was just layers and layers upon ARGs. I'm pretty sure George was on four levels of irony and five ARGs at once. It's beautiful, really. Junko Yunsui is an ARG featuring Junko, a girl who wants to find her lost sister, who was being held captive in some cell in an unknown location. It even featured a live feed of the cell for people to watch. The whole thing began with a Facebook account of the same name, that began sending mass friend requests to people. Yunsui claimed to be looking for friends with whom she could talk about the fact that her sister had been kidnapped. Curious people googled the name and came across the video aspect of the ARG, where it actually began. Hours of footage has showed Junsei's alleged sister being held captive in a cell. From that point forward, it was no longer a strange friend request on Facebook. Now, it was an information war between the secret service of the USA and a Russian military organization known as Alpha Center. Yeah, I know, 0 to 100 real quick, but that's what happened. 
the ARG followed many different puzzles online, as well as real locations like Santiago and New York. The ARG is known for going a bit over the line of what is traditionally an ARG, just to get some people to think it was more real, which it also did. Some people actually thought they were in a cyber war of some kind between Russia and the US. They weren't, of course, but still, even news outlets seem to have been tricked and have been caught in on the action. Jack Turns, no, not that one, is a YouTube channel that focuses on lost footage to tell a story of an old estate in Austin, Texas, which the owners of the estate didn't really know what to do with or what they were for. The person behind the YouTube channel bought the tapes and uploaded them to YouTube for people to enjoy, or maybe even solve, as they are quite mysterious. What no one knew was that these tapes were supposed to be leading and interesting, and as the more you tried to look down the rabbit hole, the more of a follower and perhaps even a host body you would become, as these tapes were made by a demon who wants to control someone as a host body to do uh, devil things, whatever those might be. What is also weird is that the channel seems to have had multiple lives, with three video sprees being uploaded several years apart, the first and last video being a whole seven years apart, with several year long gaps in between each upload spree. Some people began to wonder if this was actually found footage from some kind of estate, or if it was all fake. Hmm, I wonder which. This ARG is kind of all over the place, and some people on Reddit has even called it bland and boring. But I guess that's up for debate. Needlebrook is an ARG taking place in the US based town of Needlebrook, or a girl from New York called Echo Rose, who is also the same person who plays Daisy in Daisy Brown, has moved to the town. Yet she is new to the place, and to combat the feeling of loneliness, she records vlogs of herself to YouTube, just doing everyday basic white girl things. And I mean, really basic white girl things, it almost overrules the ARG with that feeling. She eventually meets up with other YouTubers by the name of Zipper Films, which are in the same situation as her, which are but a few characters in this ARG, as the entirety of it spans over several people on several platforms, so uh, so get ready to have some tabs open if you want to play this game. As time goes on, Rose and some of the actors begin to spill the tea about the secrets of Needlebrook. You see what I mean about this white girl thing? This includes both a murder, the disappearing of a kid, a general sense that the inhabitants don't want her in the town, and more. There again are several people involved in this ARG, which all have different roles and viewpoints of Needlebrook, and I'm counting 31 people, so there's enough to go after. Oh, looks like we're back with the Gmod ARGs. In fact, this should feel extremely familiar, as this is almost the exact same plot as Gmod 9 fan. Classic Gmod videos is just a simple man who enjoys simple things, like a good Gmod animated, just like the ones you could watch back in the day. When he isn't making animated videos like Gman's Day Out, he makes tutorials on animation and Gmod related things, like finding this cool secret tunnel. Just like Gmod 9 fan, this is where a monster gets unleashed into the game which constantly scares the man behind the channel, as he always looks around in horror. However, he is only visibly scared in Gmod, and apparently this entity can only be found in Gmod. Most of these glorious 240p videos show him being afraid of something, yet we hardly ever get to see what it actually is. But again, it's pretty much the same as the last few Gmod ARG, so let's just put it at that. It, it, it's literally the same. Oh, I'm sorry about this, but this entry doesn't exist. As you can clearly see, there's nothing here, it's just empty void. Yeah, whatever. This ARG is about a fictional VR company, which needs some new test subjects for their new VR inventions, offering people an escape from reality and welcoming them to a new one, which is um, totally without failures. Abigail and Ryan, the two stars of the show, are approached to test out some futuristic VR technology for the company that is currently making it. While at first just being some weird VR technology, it quickly turns into something of a Black Mirror episode. All of the videos that are uploaded have some weird kind of feeling over them and glitchy effects here and there. Yet also has some pretty good acting and treats itself kind of like a movie. But of course, where you interact with this new world and try and find clues and solve puzzles and all that. Or you could just watch it, but, you know, don't, I guess. 
It breaks the ARG code, you must try at least. Okay, I already love this. No, this is the official music on their website. I love it. Pizza Time Pizza is a black comedy series about a new pizzeria in town, which isn't a cult, it's not a cult, not at all, we only make pizza, pizza and pizza. The deeper down we go in the series, the more... The more you get sucked into the cult, and the more they will tell you about how it's not a cult, we just make it a pizza. In this ARG, you of course, try and pick up clues on what is actually going on, but it should be pretty obvious. It is, it's a cult, I mean, come on. However, how deep it goes isn't really a surface level fact. And the front facade is, of course, just a little black comedy series, which I love, it's hilarious. But it's also how they get you to join the cult. So, join the Pizza Time Pizza family today, and of course, kill your parents. Kill your parents. Kill your parents. Omega Mart is a fake commercial series yeah, series of commercials where we get to explore the world of the fake supermarket chain Omega Mart. The commercials are rather weird and surreal, yet there seems to be a certain plot being made beneath the anarchy of it all. On the surface though, it is nothing more than a Walmart knockoff trying to be creative with its weirdness, with one-eyed lemon and ham CDs. It's even a real place you can actually visit, which is as weird as you would think. Still, to this day, we don't know everything about this ARG, as there still are some mysteries that need to be solved, so maybe you could go to the real life store and find some clues. Or maybe just settle with the online videos. I'm not going to Las Vegas willingly, so I'm gonna just stay here for, for a while. The Outsider 110 is a small YouTube channel with 17 videos and only 128 subscribers. This channel oozes out that ARG feel, as most of the later videos are simply just codes and puzzles, usually reading out something along the lines of I can see you, I know where you are, or I am everywhere. The outsider definitely has that feeling of a stalker creeping on a specific foe, as the first few videos on his channel all have the same clip of him stalking a woman followed up by imagery that either fuels its weirdness or hints at its motives. It also features a website. Seems important. While most ARGs try to hide their puzzle and meaning behind the story, the outsider seems to hide his story behind puzzles and codes, as he is very open about the puzzles, with Morse code and indications, and kind of secretive about the story. Understanding the whole picture is a bit of a challenge, as on the forefront, it is simply just gibberish but gibberish that can clearly be decoded through some kind of means. Everyman Hybrid is, on the surface, a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching people the world of fitness and a healthy lifestyle through weekly YouTube videos, made by three college students who each have a different task at hand, like nutrition, exercise and editing. However, already for the first video, you can see that something is clearly off. At first, they begin implementing some kind of silly Slenderman elements into the ARG, setting the stage for a kind of mid-ARG, which we can clearly see in the video is a fake Slenderman. It's just a costume by some guy. While the first Slenderman was just a way of implementing their love of internet culture into their fitness series, it quickly turns out that they have embarked on an adventure where all of these internet creatures and cryptids are indeed real. While the first thing is just a prank, it quickly turns out not to be, as members of the ARG and people close to them begin to disappear or get hurt. Eventually, a being known as Habit appears, which seems to be the main antagonist of this ARG. It is very long, lasting several years, where along the way, fans could pick up clues, have an influence on the ARG, and shape its background, even puzzling together a story about the Mining Town 4, a group of kids who seem to have been a part of some kind of project back in the past, yet are connected to the main characters. Covering the entire ARG to a full might be futile in this format, since this ARG is one of the longer ones, but apparently also one of the better ones. It has many fans and features almost every cryptid and group of parts you can imagine. This intro seems to be the first and only 
non-English entry on the entire list. Well, almost. All the way from Brazil. Um, no hablo Portugal. Yeah, the fact that it's from Brazil also means that it's mostly only Brazilians who understand it. The entire thing is pretty much Brazilian. You are going to Brazil! <laughs> sure, the text is in English and you could do the AIG in English, but no one outside of either Portugal or Brazil actually cares about it. And this stems from a Brazilian YouTuber who made a video about the AIG, which popped off in the country. Eventually, it becomes more disturbing, but again, I don't speak Portuguese, and trying to understand this AIG through Google Translate is a bit of a mess. And I don't think anyone outside of Brazil or Portugal would actually enjoy it anyways. So, if you want to understand this AIG, then please watch this video. It's pretty much the entire AIG anyways, so uh, come to Brazil, please. Destiny5591 is a small ARG on Twitter, all about this person we don't know much about. All we know is a few tweets that there is tweeted, which are mainly just bleak messages about life and some drawings that he or she has made. It, I guess. While at first just looking like some kind of random Twitter account by some kid, people quickly began to find some codes, messages and puzzles in these drawings and tweets which weren't as bleak or normal as his profile probably would have looked like at first sight. There seems to be more than first meets the eye, as this person is apparently being held captive by someone. Yet we don't know who. There are many questions that could be answered about this ARG, like who is the person, who is holding her captive, what's actually happening, and a lot more. However, we probably aren't gonna find those answers because the ARG has been shut off by the creator. The person just didn't feel like making any more ARGs, so they're just finished, I guess. Which is, of course, fine. If you don't want to make an ARG, then you don't have to. But again, the adventure did kind of end midway through, which is, you know, always a sad thing. But yeah, it, it, that's it. It's over. It's so over. Yeah, I didn't expect to see Yuminiki down here either. Yuminiki 8th of April 2006 is a VHS tape-like video posted on Reddit and later YouTube, featuring scenes from the game Yuminiki, which you most likely know since that game fits this feel, so I'm just expecting you to. When people first saw this VHS tape-like video, they thought this might be some kind of trailer for a new game. A lot of fans were up in arms wondering if this was more than just some ARG, but a whole new update for Numeniki if not an entirely new game, a sequel or a prequel perhaps. Well, after trying to solve these riddles and poems, I can say that it's fake. It was never there, it's just... It isn't even an ARG, it's just some video some guy made because he thought it looked cool. Which, fairly, it does, but um... No ARG here, just... Numeniki tape, passing on. Dreamer Heaven is a quite mysterious and also quite covered video. Both some ordinary gamer, Scare Theta and even I have covered this video some time in the past. The video in itself is also very hard to find, as it originated from the dark web and has been removed by YouTube, for obvious reason. It is a real video and is 100% legit, yet it does apparently have something to do with child exploitation and people actually don't want to share it but remove it since it is you know, an exploitive video, of course, and it's extremely bad. Calling it an ARG is kind of... interesting. I guess finding it could be like an ARG, but as I said before, several people and I say you shouldn't do that because we want to remove the video. It is literally child exploitation. So let's just keep it like that and let it be buried. We don't want to revisit that place again, okay? So, yeah, moving on. This entry not only goes out to all those small ARGs that either haven't been played yet, but also those we haven't discovered yet. Thinking about all of these games we've just gone through, the many murder cases, cryptic logic puzzles, the lines of codes we've decoded, and all the other things, then just imagine all those we haven't even found yet. All the games we have yet to play with concepts that look entirely new. There is a world of ARGs out there, some are so hard to find that it's almost an ARG in itself to find it. 
a world full of creative potential, just waiting to be decrypted, solved, and found. If they're worth it, I mean, some of the entries on this list were kind of trash, so what do you think the YouTube channel with 3 subscribers is gonna be? But without being too negative, the world is filled with small games. Some being played out right under your nose, some in the dark corner of the web, and some that might lead to something more than just a thumbs up on the web. While some ARGs are totally harmless, be aware of those that might lead down a rabbit hole you are prepared to deal with.